Good morning, modern steaders. The first thing on today's agenda is we need to replace the broken windshield washer hose in the truck. We'll replace the battery while we're at it because the battery's weak and when I tested it, it wasn't holding a charge completely and it's still not. We gotta winterize the pig shelter. So that's gonna be fun. Let's get this fixed so we can head off to work this morning. So I went around to the parts stores yesterday looking for 3 16 washer nozzle hose thinking it's going to be easy to find. I went to both of the local parts stores and neither one of them had it. So I ended up getting 3 16 fuel line and it'll get the job done. At least that way we can get it fixed and we can have washer fluid spraying out of our windshield again. They never make anything easy to get at. You always got to take apart a bunch of stuff to get where you need to go. Disconnect my battery. Side mount batteries are kind of a pain in the butt to get at. And that's one of the reasons why I said if we're taking the battery out, we might as well replace it. It's not good anyways. Now when people talk about tools being expensive or you got a lot of tools, it's more of an investment. How much money would it have cost me to go to a mechanic today to get a battery or even more so, how much would it have cost me to go to a mechanic to get this washer fluid pump fixed? I bet you it would cost me at least a hundred bucks. You can buy a lot of tools for a hundred bucks. And I think I spent six bucks on the hose. Right here is the other broken part of our line. I'm hoping to get the line replaced all the way down from the pump. If I have to, I can put a union here and replace it right here, but I'd really like to replace it from the pump back to this factory fitting right here. Now I used to do auto mechanic work, so I have a lot of the tools, but believe it or not, the first tool set I ever bought, I bought around this time of the year at Walmart. It was a Stanley tool set with wrenches and ratchet. I think it had over 500 pieces. And then I paid 100 bucks for it. I bought that in high school. I still have some of the tools from that kit. Can, but the wrong side of it. Man, that stinks. I was hoping once I had this all apart down here, right here's my wa windshield washer bottle. I was hoping I could squeeze my way to this side where the pump is, but I can't. And then from up here, they got it weaseled in between your radiator support and your headlights, and there's no way of getting in there unless we take the battery tray all out and remove this. So for today, I'm gonna cut the hose, put a union in, and we'll join it back here to this factory fitting. And they give us a nice connection with a nice barb fitting. And then just do the same on the bottom. Joined them both together down below. I'll show you what the difference between fuel line so fuel lines are thicker, the washer fluid hose is thinner, and it's rubber. All right, let's get them joined together. The factory fitting, nice. All right, now we got our new battery. One thing I normally do 
is normally I'll put dielectric grease on all my fittings so they don't corrode. I still have plenty of that left on there from before. The worst part is we don't know if this fixed it until we get it all put back together. Fingers crossed. We'll have to put more washer fluid in first. We used that all up yesterday. Trying to diagnose the problem. Burr. My hands are getting cold. Fill up the washer pump. At least now we got a good battery. Here goes nothing. Let's check and make sure there's nothing wet under the hood. Looks good under here. Let's check under the truck. Nothing dripping. I think we solved the problem. Just gonna put my clips back in and we can get ready to go to work. Since it didn't really warm up at all today, we gotta go outside and winterize the pig shelter. Putting on my coveralls. It's only eight degrees out. The first thing we're gonna have to do is we gotta let the pigs out out of the pen. We'll let them into the pasture area and we'll lock them out, and that way we can have the pen to ourselves. We don't gotta worry about the pigs trying to eat my pants or knock you over. They seem pretty comfy. And they're tote. I don't know if they're gonna wanna come out. You nice and warm in there. You know you wanna come out. Oh, that worked out pretty good. Now we'll lock them out of the pen. They're gonna be confused. Since we can get quite a bit of snow here, and it's got some rigidity to it, I don't know how much snow it can actually hold. So I'm thinking about putting a four inch wide board across, and then sticking the board off of here onto that like a ridge pole for a house. That way we don't have to worry about this collapsing on the pigs if we get a lot of heavy, wet snow. I think the pigs are confused. I'm locked in here and they're locked out there. All right, we're not going for anything super elaborate here. I just want to give some strength to our cattle pan. And I think that'll work nicely. Just a rough sawn piece of one by four wedged in there. The pigs want to come in. Crazy pigs, usually you want out. I think that's going to be strong enough. I'm not going to have to run a brace off the back to the front. Awesome. I'm going to get the tarp. Get the tarp installed and then we'll get some more hay in here for the pigs. We'll let them back in. They'll be happy. The way this pole was before is it was sticking past the edges and I decided if I left it that way it would wear a hole in our tarp. So we're going to cut them at a 45 and make it so it protrudes out a little less. 
won't be perfect, but it'll be better. All right. Just like that. Let's get the tarp unfolded. been kind of interesting. The pigs are trying to eat the blue tarp. So I'm trying to get this covered up as quickly as I can before they start eating it again. I don't know why they want to eat a tarp. Sorry about that. I had to go to like fast beast mode for a minute and try to get the tarp secured because the pigs want to eat it. It should be secured enough so I don't have to worry about it for now. I can get it better in a little while. I hope. I ran inside to get some zip ties and I came out, this whole thing was off. Never did I think when I was be winterizing my pig's winter shelter that I'd be fighting the pigs to keep the tarp on the shelter. I thought if anything I'd be fighting the wind. I wish I would have got more of it on camera, but the camera is in here. They were out there. I was out there and I didn't want them ripping it off completely. Crazy pigs. So we got our ridge pole on the inside. I pulled the tarp over and I zip tied it in to keep it taut. I have a board going across the outside. I got another board on the inside sandwich to the tarp. I found it's the best way to secure our tarps is sandwiching it in the areas we need it between two boards. This is how we have the tarps secured to our wood piles and some of them have been covered for two years and the tops haven't moved. Hey, yeah, we'll give them a nice fresh fill of hay. They can make their bed out of it. That's where we're gonna end today's video. Always something unexpected, it seems like, popping up on the homestead, but that's what keeps it interesting and entertaining. The pigs are loving the hay, which is nice. We've got two more projects checked off the list. Tomorrow we'll be working on the vent for our root cellar. I'm looking forward to that, seeing how cool we can get the root cellar to stay. We've gotten it down to 49 so far, which is being enclosed. Which is nice because the basement's the warmest room of our house. The upstairs this morning was 71. So I'm going to say the basement was probably close to 75. 
and the root cellar was 51. This is the time of the year that our basement's the warmest, so in the summertime, the basement's cooler than what it is right now, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.